الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome to the fourth halqa on the series of Ramadan reminders. Today I'd like to address and talk about one ibadah that is very very important and in Ramadan it is the month of ibadah it is the month where we are racing towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the month to seek the high levels of paradise this is the month to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the month to seek being freed from the hellfire and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are people being freed from the hellfire every single night of the month so what I want to talk about is as salah the prayer and its importance and how we should be dedicated in the month of Ramadan to perfect our prayer now there's a hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam where he says that the first thing the first thing that the slave of Allah will be reckoned for on the day of resurrection is salah if it is found satisfactory then he is surely will he will surely be successful however if it is found deficient then he will be in, he was a, he would be a great loser on that on the day of resurrection. However, if the the, the daily prayers, the five daily prayers that are being you know looked at, if they are found deficient, Allah subhanahu wa taala will tell the angels, look if this person performed any extra prayers, and with these extra prayers, whatever is deficient from the five daily prayers will be will be completed with them in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the month of Ramadan is a month where we dedicate ourselves to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during the night time we pray Salat al Taraweeh or what or Qiyam al Layl, the prayer the night at prayer, uh, the night prayer. So therefore a salah we should practice our prayer and we should perfect our prayer. What are the aspects of salah we should perfect? In a hadith in Abu Dawood, hadith Ubad ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, the Prophet, he said, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, khamsu salawat, five prayers. If daradahunna Allahu ta'ala, Allah has made obligatory. Man ahsana wudu'ahunna, wa sallahunna li waqtihinna, wa atamma ruku'ahunna wa khushu'ahunna. Now he talked about five, four things and four aspects of the prayer that has to be taken care of. And these are Man Ahsan Wudu Ahunna. First of all, Al Wudu. The person has to make sure that his wudu is complete according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Secondly, Pray at, on time, which is one of the good, the best deeds. Prophet ﷺ said that as-salatu ala waqtiha is the best of deeds. Then the second, the third thing, which is making sure that he performs the ruku' and the bowing perfectly. Likewise, al khushu' Khushu' which is the concentration in the prayer and your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So among these, three of them are physical and outwardly. And one of them is, are, is inside. So the wudu aspect is a physical thing, is it something outwardly. Uh, the time, making sure you pray on time, and likewise the actions of the prayer, such as the ruku' or the sujood or the standing up, these are the physical aspects of, of the prayer. 
So you must perfect those also. also. And the other one is al khushur khushur which is the concentration in the prayer and your humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Certainly successful are the believers. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who are humble in their prayer and submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making sure that they are aware of what they're reciting, they're aware that they're in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the khushu' aspect, how will, the, will this come? Many people ask, how can we, can we develop a khushu' in our prayer? Well, this needs practice. Like anything in life, whatever you, whatever you practice, you become better at it. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said in a hadith reported in the book of Muslim, uh, by uh, the companion Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he said, Afdalu salat the best prayer, طول القنوت, the prayer that, that the, the person stands longer, and he stands, spends more time in the prayer, standing and make, making his salah long. Now, in order for you, if you're, you're performing the prayer, such as Salat al-Taraweeh, where the Imam is reciting long surahs, then this is a good opportunity where you can stand in front behind the Imam and you can listen to the Qur'an. And this is one aspect. However, now, nowadays all of us are at home and we, are, we all have to pray, most of us, by ourselves. So therefore, we need to, uh, we need to learn the Qur'an. We need to increase our In order for you to increase the length of your prayer, you have to know a lot of Qur'an, you have to memorize a lot of Qur'an. That's why it's important that we spend this time that we memorize the Qur'an, we review the Qur'an that we memorized in the past uh, during the daytime, we re refresh our, our, our memory of the Qur'an, and at night time we pray and make our salah long with the uh, long rak'at and performing the salah with long, uh, long dur durations. Now, the Prophet ﷺ told us about the reward of how much reward you get per ayah that you recite in the prayer. The prayer when you're praying, for every, for every ayah that you recite, how much reward do you get? In hadith, in the book of, the, in the book of Muslim, a reporter of Abu Hurairah the Prophet ﷺ said, I will ahadukum. إذا رجع إلى أهلي أن يجد فيه ثلاث خليفات عظام سمان. He said to the Sahaba, would you, would, one, would, we, would you like that when you return home to your family that you find three large fat pregnant she camels? Now the Sahaba رضي الله عنه, they were very familiar with this commodity. It was, it was the best commodity that someone can possess in their time. It still is the case right nowadays if you go to the, to the Bedouins uh, in the desert, uh, the, 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 their sheik or their camels are very dear to them. So for us, let's say, it's comparable to a car. The top, top model of car you can, you can have. So imagine the top car you would, you know, that you could, it could be a Ferrari or whatever it may be, or a Mercedes. And you go home and you find a brand new car waiting for you. The Sahaba said, yes. Surely, we will all like to, uh, to, to, have, uh, to have that. Then the Prophet ﷺ told them that three verses that one of you recites in his prayer is better, or are better for him than three large fat pregnant she camels. So these verses that you recite are more higher in reward than any commodity, than any car you would have. Let's say you recite 50 verses in your prayer, that is more valuable than receiving 50 cars, the top models. So brothers and sisters, let's increase our prayers, let's practice perfecting our prayer. This is a month where we are taking, you know, we are taking provision for the rest of the year. So the Iman that you get in this month and the effort that you put in this month, you will reap the fruits of it. For the rest of the year. Jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu ala sayyidina nabina Muhammad 
وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته